The solution we're seeking to achieve here is, uh, is an issue that we've had has perplexed us for quite some time. We've spent many years trying to progress roads, roadwork safety initiatives on state controlled roads. We've um, sought to remove traffic controllers from high risk locations. Every, every few years there's a traffic controller killed. We're using, increasingly using portable traffic signals. Um, we've got a suite of other innovations, but despite all these initiatives, um, we still have these issues with both workplace health and safety, with uh, traffic controllers and road workers within the sites, and also road users at, at end of queues. So wherever we've got road work activity, you get a stationary vehicle and you get the whole issue of energy transfer if someone doesn't stop. Um, and we're looking to um, a, a solution to uh, supplement the current measures we use, which, which clearly we've still got ongoing challenges with, to reduce those collisions and also potentially as a last resort to forewarn workers that there's a a um, extreme hazard approaching. So the benefits, um, you've probably already downloaded, that. those of you that are interested in this problem have downloaded the fact sheet, but the benefits are pretty intuitive. Obviously we want to have fewer incidents, reduced cost of investigations, workplace health and safety issues, insurance claims. Most importantly, we really want to cut, cut the, uh, the, the, the outcomes that involve death and serious injury um, and the, the associated trauma and, and um, hospitalisation um, claims. Next slide, please. So just a, a little bit of context. Um, this must be a slide with, you have to click to get the, uh, the, the graphical content on the screen. But um, we, we went through an exercise, one of our consultants went through an exercise. Typically our, our investment program on, um, in terms of tr treating safety issues involves run on, run off road and head on collisions. So there's a large program that works on the Bruce Highway where we're trying to target those, so they're the predominant crash types. But we were a little surprised when, when um, one, of these, uh, one of these investigators drilled down, had a look at the crash types and the big lump in the middle, this is solely on one corridor, the Bruce Highway, the big lump in the middle is uh, rear end crashes. We looked at those and a quarter of those crashes involve roadworks. So the, the, the irony there of course is that we're out trying to address roadwork safety issues and the activity we're doing is contributing to the crash problem. So we really want to be far more proactive in any interventions we have to improve safety. We don't want to contribute to, uh, to, to the safety issues. Um, if I have a look at the next slide, we can show the type of measures we're currently using. This is uh, just a, a planned view showing what, what you might encounter at a roadwork site. Um, you've got queued vehicles there on the left. Typically, we rely, um, the, the general thing that you've all encountered are, are advanced signs, static signs. Increasingly, we're encouraging our, our contractors, in some cases, mandating that we have vehicle activated um, active signs, the, the LED displays there. And more so, um, another measure we've implemented or we've uh, formalised or permitted to be used to the, the yellow bars there are rumble strips. So we're doing whatever we can to, to try to forewarn vehicles that there's a queue ahead. Um, despite that, and for those of you who looked at the problem, you'll see some terribly serious crashes that are occurring, often involving heavy vehicles. They come in at speed, 100 kilometres an hour. We've got people trying to do the right thing. They're stopped for a traffic controller and they get cleaned up um, and, and invariably killed um, multiple deaths in, in a number of incidents in the last few years by, by, by heavy vehicle impacts um, crashing to the end of the queue. So that's the problem and we're looking for um, measures um, to, to, to assist in mitigating that. Thanks John, that's a uh, really interesting problem so I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions out there. I've got a few questions for you. Um, the first one, can you describe, you mentioned about extreme hazards. What would you call an extreme hazard and what is the time period of an extreme hazard? Like, as an example, is that when potentially there's gonna be someone re-rending another car, uh, which is only a couple of second event, or it is an extreme hazard you're talking about something over longer duration? So, yeah, an extreme hazard, we're, we're looking for outliers um, and the type of, type of uh, thought, you know, um, a, a potential solution would be looking at a device down the road, looking at approaching vehicle speeds. You've got a typical profile of vehicle speeds. Um, th there was an incident um, on the Bruce Highway uh, um, at one of our construction sites where a vehicle just came in, into a, a reduced speed roadwork site, 80 kilometres an hour, came in at over 130 kilometres an hour. Um, and if we knew in advance um, that that vehicle was approaching, that, that potentially you could warn, warn um, both the current road users, we could 
initiate action to try to clear the queue if there's a, if it's sufficiently far in advance. Um, that that's it. So it could be. It's ultimately a, a matter of identifying that the outlying vehicle um, down the road and have to be sufficiently far to provide. It could it could be seconds. In some cases, a second might have might have all um, that it might have been necessary for a road worker to look up, take a step, and and not get cleaned up. Yeah. So you're potentially looking at yeah the development of additional hardware. It could be trailers or whatever further down the road to monitor using whatever it is radar, video and other alert systems further back at the uh, construction site? Yes. Yeah. Other questions? Are the police engaged in the project in any way? The, uh, that's, the, the police, um, the incident I referred to before, the reason we knew how fast that vehicle was coming is that the police had a had a camera two kilometres up the road, and they they clocked this guy um, coming in at high speed. This was this the story was big in the press. You probably read this, but um, he came in at very high speed. So the first thought then was, well, why? If police know they've got a device, they've got those um, quite sophisticated mobile trailers now. If they know this, can't they give us a forewarning? So um, that was our first uh, first. Um, request to QPS but the the focus principally that they've got is on, is on enforcement and the mechanism with which they give us forewarning whether it be you know mobile device or text or that it was just a, it was fraught with potential issues and whether in fact there's actually got a, they've got a device near the site so we're looking at something that we could more um, consistently utilize at at a site not rely on just the random enforcement from police but they've certainly got a keen interest um, Anything online? Uh, how many traffic control companies are currently outsourced to with uh, main roads? Um, that's a good question. The, 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 we, we do uh, we administer a, a traffic management registration scheme, and and um, the, 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 they're in the tens. Um, the, the number of traffic controllers, registered traffic controllers, have gone through the process. Um, the, the people on stop slow bat and the people are set up, they're in the th ten, tens of thousands. Um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of the vast majority of uh, of transport main roads work is outsourced to those companies. Okay, final opportunities for questions. Yep, other one. If a solution was developed that worked, would you apply leverage to those other traffic companies that were doing the the work to have to use it? Is that something you'd, you'd look at? The um, yeah, you know, that, that that's a, that's an, a question we'd anticipate as well. The just by way of an analogy, the other initiative I mentioned is portable signals, we've, where we've uh, we're trying to remove the stop slow men, um, flag flag persons from the from the road environment. We have actually effectively mandated in high risk environments they can't be used. You've got to use this, uh, the portable traffic signals. We we haven't yet determined whether this would be a mandatory requirement. So obviously um, that. There's a number of companies there that a number of the of the traffic management companies are very proactive and they'd they'd adopt anything voluntarily that would result in in, in, in reduced um, potential risk for their workers, but we haven't we haven't formulated a view on whether this would be a mandatory requirement. But but we certainly have that mechanism to do that via our contracts. Okay, thank you. My timekeeper says time is up. Thanks very much, John. That was fantastic. Thank you.